In this video, you'll discover Dr. David Sinclair's newest updates to his supplement routine. If you've been following Dr. David Sinclair, you know that he updated supplement protocol from time to time. And this year, he has made two major changes that most people have missed. But it's extremely difficult to track his changes. Some supplements he used to take and he stopped. Others he recently added. What does he used to take? What has he changed? And his new experiments. And also, I'm going to give you a bonus that is going to allow you even further to copy what he's doing. Everything simplified in one place. This is supplement number one. From 2020 to 2022, Dr. David Sinclair used to mention that he takes both fisetine and quercetin. But first, let's start with why he decided to take them in the first place and the experiment that he ran on himself. The, the one that I'm testing out is fisetin now shown that it's senolytic, it kills off the senescent cells in the body, at least in mice, probably in humans, based on some human data. So I've added quercetin, which is also uh, suppresses the activity of senescent cells. However, recently, it would seem to me that he dropped one of these. Can you guess which it is? Now let's go to a clip from middle 2023. So resveratrol and fisetin are chemical compounds from plants that are stressed. Resveratrol you find in grapes, fisetin is found in uh, other uh, plants that are stressed. And so I take usually between half a gram and one gram of these chemicals as well uh, in the morning. David Sinclair usually mentions quercetin and physetin together since they serve similar purpose, targeting senescent cells. However, he didn't mention quercetin, not only with physetin, but at all. So it sounds to me like he stopped taking quercetin. He may still cycle it for killing senescent cells, we don't know. And based on the data on quercetin, and I believe that he knows exactly what he's doing, it makes sense to me. If you've been subscribed to my newsletter, you probably know it too, because you received my quercetin report, which include conclusions from analyzing over 250 studies. It says in the report, rule number one, avoid quercetin supplement for longevity under age 60 you already received the optimal dose in your diet. Here is why. Excess unnecessary supplementation of quercetin will have side effects. Inhibiting sirtuin 6 which promotes longevity, inhibiting NRF2, a potent longevity mechanism, and reducing glutathione. All of these will hurt your longevity. Now, you can get this report for free. I'll tell you when to take quercetin for longevity, the doses, and the timing. You can find the link in the pinned comment. Again, it's absolutely free. So, the verdict. I suspect that every day he only takes fisetin. How much does he take? Sinclair said he takes between 500 milligrams to 1000 milligrams per day. But I think it's 500 milligrams based on a past comment from 2021. Fisetin and quercetin, half a gram in the yogurt. If you feel more clarity about Dr. David Sinclair protocol, please subscribe to my channel. Subscribe now and stay ahead in the race against time and aging. The next supplement, very few people even know that Sinclair takes. For whatever reason, he keeps it as a secret. It doesn't appear in his book, and he hardly ever mentioned that in any of his interviews. But he did his PhD on it, and probably have been taking it over 20 years. In fact, this could be the very first supplement that Dr. David Sinclair has begun taking, years back. Do you know what it is? It's not resveratrol. And alpha-lipoic acid, I did my PhD on this molecule, coincidentally, and it is a molecule that is very good for the energy in cells. Actually, the thing that turned me on to that was uh, I spoke to Denham Harmon's family. So yeah. Denham Harmon, you may know him. He's the father of the oxidative stress theory of aging. Yeah, I, I was fortunate to win an award with his name on it, and I went out there, and his family were very generous to host me. And he was still alive at the time. He passed away a few years ago, but he was still healthy and going into work at 92. And so I said, what is, what's his secret? Oh, lipoic acid. What about the dose? He fails to mention his exact dose, but a standard dose of alpha lipoic acid is about 300 milligrams, either once a day or twice a day. Also, you're going to get a better absorption if you take it on empty stomach. So probably lipoic acid is the first supplement that Dr. David Sinclair ever taken. As we move to the next supplement, let me remind you that today we're going to also cover Sinclair's longevity drugs. And there is one addition that surprised me. 
And I'm going to create a special summary for you to simplify everything that we learned today about Dr. David Sinclair protocol. This is also an interesting experiment he had. This is his last experiment. This is spermidine. Dr. David Sinclair started taking spermidine two years ago. Let's hear him speaking about that. In just the last few months, I've added that to my protocol, and we'll have to see how my numbers look on Inside Tracker. Does he still take it today? This segment is from 2023. I'm asked this question every day. David, what do you take? Spermidine is a very interesting molecule, and you can buy it as a supplement, and it's been shown to extend the lifespan of many different animals, and probably it works by stabilizing the epigenome. So yes, it continues to take spermidine. How much does it take? How much of that are you taking? Uh, a gram as well. Okay. Even though in this video, Dr. David Sinclair mentioned it takes one gram of spermidine, later in the comment section, he said, correction, I said I take one gram of spermidine, but the active ingredient in the capsules is one to two milligrams. I apologize for the confusion. So the verdict about spermidine is one to two milligrams taking every day in the morning. Now, if you too consider to take spermidine, maybe there is a safer and cheaper way to get spermidine. And many of my subscribers ask me how to get spermidine from food. This study measured how much spermidine in each type of food and ranked them from the highest concentration to the lowest. I'm quoting from this study. Spermidine concentration in foods was as follows. Mushroom, the highest, 88.6 milligrams per kilo of food. Green peas, 65 milligrams per kilo of food. And broccoli, 32 milligrams per kilo of food. So as you can see, there is a bunch of spermidine in mushrooms, but also in broccoli and green peas. These levels coming from food more than satisfy or at least similar to the levels of spermidine that Dr. Sinclair takes in a supplement form. And also there is another certainty about the safety of spermidine in those foods. Of course, the highest food in spermidine is wheat germ, which wasn't measured in the experiment. So we have seen one major change that he has made. But the next supplement is one of the most consistent that he has been taking for many years. What is not consistent is its legal status. Can you guess what it is? And uh, so NMN is, is what I take each day. I take a, a gram of it. I know a, a gram is likely to be raising my NAD levels during the day. I also try to time it with my natural circadian rhythm. So NAD will go up during the morning, getting ready. But if I take it at night, I'm actually starting to interfere with my sleep patterns. In 2023, he spoke about the dose. NAD boosters, I talked about NMN. There are other ones such as NR. I take a gram, 1,000 milligrams of NMN every day in the morning. The verdict, it still takes one gram of NMN every day with water in the morning. The next supplement Dr. David Singler started taking after lipoic acid. This is the famous or infamous resveratrol. So let's go back. In 2019 book, he mentioned, I take one gram of NMN every morning, along with one gram of resveratrol, shaken into my homemade yogurt. Does he still take the same dose? In 2022, in his very long interview in his channel, he confirmed, I'm quoting, I've been taking one gram of resveratrol since 2004. And in a recent segment from 2023, I showed you with fisetine, he mentioned that resveratrol again with the exact dose, one gram per day. So it's the same exact dose, the one he wrote in his book, confirmed. Of course, if you follow Sinclair, it's not just how much resveratrol it takes, but also how. Now that has been evolved over the years. So I showed you in the book that he mentioned in 2019 that he mixes resveratrol with yogurt. We changed that protocol and then began to mix resveratrol with olive oil. However, I was pretty surprised to see that he also changed that protocol as well. Let's hear from him what he's doing now. I've even tried, I like to mix up my diet like anybody else. I've tried olive oil plus a bit of vinegar and a basil leaf in the morning. It's like drinking a, uh, what do you call it, salad dressing in the morning. Uh, that one lasted for about a month. I've given up on that. I now like this coconut yogurt that you've turned me on to, actually. The verdict, one gram of resveratrol mixed in coconut yogurt in the morning. The next two supplements that Dr. David Sinclair takes, they cover both longevity but also health, general health. The next one is fish oil, omega-3. This 2023 segment is one of the few segments where he mentioned fish oil. The fish oils, those are very important for inflammation. It turns out one of these molecules activates CERT1 
and maybe that's why these are good for health. Since it wasn't included in his book, perhaps he only added this supplement to his routine very recently. What about the dose? Dr. David Sinclair never mentioned the dose, but I don't want to keep you in the dark on that, so I collected for you what other doctors are doing. Dr. Peter Atia, Dr. Rhonda Patrick, and Dr. Andrew Huberman. And all of them kind of take the same exact amount. So by taking four of these capsules a day, I'm taking roughly two grams of EPA a day and probably a gram and a half of DHA. Now let's hear from Dr. Rhonda Patrick how much she takes. So I take four grams a day. I take two in the morning, two grams in the morning, and I take two grams in the evening. Rhonda said that she takes four grams in total. Now let's hear from Dr. Andrew Huberman. My understanding is that we need to hit a threshold level of EPA in order to derive these important benefits. I try and get two grams per day of EPA from supplementation. Note that they all consume omega-3 in a supplement form only as a fish oil. I'm going to create another addition specifically on fish oil for longevity in general health, because they're subscribing now to get the special edition on omega-3 when it's gonna come out. Similar to fish oil, vitamin D and K2 are basic supplements that cover not only longevity, but basic health. And in 2019, in his book, Sinclair mentioned that he takes vitamin D and K2. Does he take them today? In mid-2023, he mentioned them. Vitamin D3 and K2, these are very important, of course, in places where we avoid the sun or we cannot get enough sunlight. K2 is not very well known. Vitamin K2 will protect your cardiovascular system from calcium deposits and put the calcium into your bones rather than your arteries. And usually those supplements come together in the same pill. So I take that. What about the dose of those two supplements? I never found one interview where he mentioned specific doses of those two supplements. I think taurine is super interesting. This amino acid was shown in the science paper from last week to when you give it to mice, they have a lot of health benefits that are similar to what I just described in humans. And they even gave it to monkeys and found that their health improved. But the big deal was that those mice live 12 to 16% longer. It was a significant extension of lifespan, which is a big deal because if it had a negative side effect, they probably wouldn't have lived longer. 